I am very pleased to be joined by Ryan Burridge, the point guard of Szeged. Ryan, thank you for coming, first of all. How are you doing on this very cloudy Friday afternoon? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me also because, as maybe all the listeners know, you were voted the MVP of the month of October by the fans. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations for that. You really you. had a very good start in the big, uh, in the season. How do you see your first month in, in this Hungarian league? Um, I think I had a pretty good month. Um, the team did really well. Um, I think we, it was tough coming in because I didn't know anything about the situation. Um, the team didn't know me. I was just kind of thrown into the fire. Um, but we made, made a way and uh, kind of just figured it out. And uh, that's kind of what we've just been doing these past couple of weeks. And so, so I think I did pretty good. Yes, you had the first 50 wall performance of the season. Congrats for that. We are talking after the day of the game against Page, And now mm. that you lost this game, you are in a two-game losing streak. Um, how was this game? What do you think you missed to get the W at home? Yeah, I think um, we just had a couple key um, turnovers and a couple key possessions that we didn't execute um, really well. And that kind of threw off the momentum of us and they gave them confidence and they kind of just took it and ran with it. Um, we didn't do really a good job of on defense, of stopping them and and getting the rebound and going, um, and that kind of kind of put us in a bad spot um, where we were just trailing and trying to fight back and uh, trying to get the refs on our side and all that stuff. Um, so I think we just got to come together, go, go to practice, and figure it all out, start from scratch, and come get a new game plan and go from there. We will get back to this game because I have some more questions about uh, that. But uh, it will be a listener Q&A podcast. So we will have mm -hmm. some listener submitted questions. But before that, let me start at the beginning because it is very interesting for me, at least. The last mm -hmm. guest I had on this podcast in the last season was Liam O'Reilly, and he was also from Texas. You are mm -hmm. also from Texas, which is, I think, maybe the biggest American football state in all the U.S., how come that mm -hmm. you became a basketball player and not an NFL player, for example, or an American football okay. player? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Texas is like really big in, in my state and even in my city. Um, I actually played all sports. So I played baseball, football, basketball, soccer. I did all that growing up. Um, and then it got to a point where I had to choose one um, when I got to high school. And I kind of just have the love of the game for basketball. And I kinda, I'm kind of, i kind of like an indoor type of guy. I don't really like the heat. I don't like the snow the cold and all that stuff. So that kind of uh, made my decision and I just stuck with basketball. And what was the other sport you were good at? Um, baseball was my best sport, actually. Um, I just didn't like the outside. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> do the weather and stuff like that. So uh, ba basketball, definitely got the AC and all that stuff. So I, I chose that one. And what about your family? Was your father, for example, a great uh, Cowboys fan or, or something like that? Did he pressure you? to choose American football? No, my dad My dad is actually a diehard Cowboys fan. So you, if you go into the house, you see like posters and stuff like that, um, Cowboys players, all that jerseys and all that stuff. Um, but he didn't pressure me at all. He just kind of like put me in every aspect, um, put me in all different sports, put me in track, all this stuff, uh, and kind of just let me make my own decision. Um, and I think that's that's kind of that's kind of why I chose basketball because I had the heart for it, not just – uh, did it because he wanted me to do it, if that makes sense. Have you seen the game last night, Dallas-Washington? No, I haven't seen it. I, haven't seen it. I actually don't watch football um, that much. I actually don't really watch TV too much. Um, but I, I know if it was a loss, then my dad was probably yelling at the TV or something like that. So um, yeah. they, won, they won pretty easily. They won pretty easily. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I know he was, he was probably very excited then. I know it is a commonly asked question. Uh, I think it's commonly asked, but I am very uh, interested in your opinion. You told me that you played all the traditional American sports. And we mm -hmm. always say that you American guys are uh, more physical. You are more prepared. You have so much better physical uh, attributes than the European players. Do you think that it is because of that that you are trying all the sports when you are young? Um, I think it's um, more of like just finding your passion. Uh, you just kind of get thrown into all the sports just so you can see like, oh, I don't I don't like being hit, so I'm not going to play football. Or like, I do like being indoors, so I'm going to play like an indoor sport or something like that. So um, I think it, the, the fiscality is actually kind of tough over here. Um, I think the difference is like we, 
emphasize like the weight room and all that stuff at a young age in the States, um, as opposed to here, they don't really emphasize it as much, um, at least not here in Segard. Segard. You told me that it was physical. I imagine that it was physical yesterday against Page because I, I, I did not see the game, but I read the comments and they told that uh, Page defended very, very tough. Yeah, um, they actually ended up calling like, I want to say like four flagrant calls or something like that. It was kind of crazy, but um, yeah, it was very physical game, very up and down game, chippy game. Um, and they hats off to them, they got the win. So it was tough. Did you think that this will be uh, so much physical, this Hungarian basketball league? Um, I mean, I played overseas before, so I kind of knew like how things would go. Um, I think it's just like, if the refs are going to give you calls or if they're going to let you play, that's kind of that, that just makes the difference in the game and kind of determines like how you'll play, how I play it. If that makes sense. Let's go back to Texas for a minute. You played mm -hmm. three seasons at the University mm -hmm. of North Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And after yes. that, you transfer to Gonzaga. Please uh, mm -hmm. tell the listeners who are not so into the NCAA that mm -hmm. Gonzaga is a very good school. They yeah. are usually close to the final four. And mm -hmm. I think in the 19th season before you transferred, they went to the mm -hmm. final four, but they lost in the final, if I'm not mistaken. So I think yeah. it is a pretty big word to say that you transferred to this school and you played nearly all the games, uh, if mm -hmm. I'm checking the stats correctly. So you were a, a key player for them. How did this transfer go? Uh, so um, I so when I was in college, we didn't have like the, the COVID year, the like transfer right away. So like, um, I didn't really want to transfer to any schools because I knew I had to sit out and all that stuff. But I went to UNT for three years or so. Um, and actually in my last game, I actually uh, cracked my kneecap. So before I transferred to Gonzaga, I cracked my kneecap. Um, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I was going to play basketball again. So I was in rehab, all this stuff. And I was just like, um, I'm just, I'm just going to put my name into the transfer portal. So that's what I did. I got all this feedback and like all these different teams calling me and stuff like that. Um, and I always wanted to play like a, at a high, like a high level, high major NCAA basketball. Um, that's kind of why I went into my decision of transferring from UNT because we're considered like a mid major or whatever. Um, so I ended up going to Gonzaga because they're a high major to go to the NCAA tournament. And that's kind of, that was my goal was to get to the tournament. Ended up not happening because of COVID. So, um, I mean, it was still a great season. I imagine yeah. it, it was uh, a very bad situation that you had a very good team. You won the Western Conference, mm -hmm. uh, the West Coast Conference. Yeah. So I think you have, you would have a great chance during the tournament, but yeah, COVID came and all is history now. Let's go to the listener questions because mm -hmm. we have some great ones, I think. Who is your role model or hero in basketball and why? Um, I would say my, my role model... I'd probably say Allen Iverson. I love Allen Iverson. That's who I watched growing up, the basketball, football kind of thing. I even wore the braids like him, just number three. That's my favorite number and all that stuff. Um, but for my my hero, I'd definitely say my dad. Like my dad put in all the effort, put in all the work to get me to where I am today. Um, and that's kind of like, I mean, I praise to him because he he went, he did it all. He was working and still had time to work out with me. So. Yeah, that's, that's definitely my, my role model. Did he have uh, any sporting career? Yeah, so he was he, he grew up in the country, little town. He played basketball, baseball, football, all the way up until high school. And so um, he ended up playing basketball in uh, college at Lamar University. Um, didn't play after that. Uh, ended up taking care of me, my siblings, and all that stuff. So um, didn't get the opportunity to play professionally, but kind of living through me, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, it absolutely makes. Which is your favorite NBA team and who is your favorite player? Um, I'm not really a favorite NBA team type of guy. I like the players. I like to watch different players. I like Damian Lillard. I like Russell Westbrook. I like Steph Curry, um, Jamal Murray. Um, and then obviously my guys that I play with, Corey Kispert and Killian Tilly and all those guys that are in the league right now that went to Gonzaga with me. Uh, those, those are kind of people I look at highlights and stuff like that. Yes, I imagine you, you said uh, Ellen Iverson. This mm -hmm. is why you like to play so much in the in the uh, near near to the basket. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just being quick and all that stuff. Uh, I kind of modeled my game after him a little bit when I was younger, and um, I kind of just adjusted to like everything, like the physicality and all that stuff. And um, 
that's kind of just how my, my career went, my path went. As I told some minutes ago, you had the first 50 well performance uh, of the season. You had mm -hmm. other really great performances throughout these nine games, but mm -hmm. I I see that your outside game is is nowhere close to your inside game. Mm -hmm. And as I checked your college stats, I see mm -hmm. that you had very good shooting performance from outside the three. Uh, mm -hmm. Once it was over 40 percent. So mm -hmm. why is it that you cannot do as well from outside the arc? Yeah, I think it's all mental, just adjusting. Um, I mean, the past couple of years or so, I haven't really had the opportunity to play um, over 15, 20 minutes or so. So um, getting this opportunity of just playing like almost all the game is, is kind of a lot and it's kind of uh, mentally tolling, if that makes sense. So um, I think I just, if I just focus, then it'll, that's just something that I, I work on in practice and stuff like that. Even when I'm shooting by myself, I mean, I can make the shot, but um, I just got to do it in the game. It's all mental. It's great that you say this mental part because my next question is that the team has a very short rotation. Usually mm -hmm. it's seven or maximum eight guys. And as you told, you usually play the whole game, which means 40 mm -hmm. minutes. You had overtime game, you played 44 minutes. So it's so much minutes. And do mm -hmm. you think this can cause any problems in the long term? Um, I mean, that's that's up to we'll see we'll see at the end of the season how that works but um I think as of right now we're good we're in a good situation um we won a couple games we got a little um high high on, um high on life and high on the winning role um and that kind of just took our focus out um as long as we stay focused we'll be okay we have a good game plan we have good players um we know our roles we know all that stuff so um I think if we could just keep going with that um going back to what we did at the beginning of the year then we'll be fine uh, what was your first impression when you arrived at Saget? Yeah, so my first impression was um, I actually arrived at like 1 a.m. or something like that. So it was kind of dark and I didn't know anything what was, what was going on. But um, it's very peaceful. I like it. I lo like it a lot. It's very peaceful. I like the, the river, the bridge and all that stuff. Um, I like the, like the colors and stuff like that. So um, I usually walk to practice in like 10 minutes from the gym or so. Um, and I just kind of like take it all in. Uh, it, it brings me peace and it keeps me calm. I think you answered it already, but I have to ask that. Do you like Saged, the city so far? Yeah, I love it. I love the city. I love the fans. The fan base is crazy. Um, they show a lot of love and I just love it here. Do they already have the Christmas shopping part uh, prepared? Um, I saw a little bit. They were setting it up. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't really went back down there to see if it's fully up yet. Um, but I heard it's it's something amazing. Yes, to see. yes. I was once there so many years ago, and it is beautiful. So don't mm -hmm. miss that. Don't miss that when we when you will have uh, some free time to go and have a walk. How do you feel about the team? Yeah, I mean, I love the team. I love our players. Um, we are a, a gritty group, um, and that's kind of how you have to play. Um, I didn't know anything about the situation coming in, but what I heard was like we were trying to stay in the first league and stuff like that. So um, I think we could do way better than that. I don't, I don't, I think we're shooting too low. I think we need to shoot higher. Yeah, it's very interesting because before the start of the season, we talked uh, with Daniel, my co-host in the podcast, that maybe the Saget will be the the team who can fear relegation. And after that, they uh, told that they will sign three foreign players. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you started the season very well, as you told us some minutes ago. How come that such a good player Mm -hmm. is available in the mm -hmm. very end of the uh, summer season because I would imagine that you have a very good pedigree, you went to great colleges, you, are, you have mm -hmm. very good stats. How come that this good of a player ends up in Hungary at the end of the summer? Yeah, so um, originally my um, thing was I was just trying to see where I was going to play. I didn't know anything going on. Um, I ended up uh, firing my agent um, after the last season in the G League. Um, and I kind of didn't know what to do. So um, I was just talking to one of my mentors and he was just telling me about, he was talking to all the teams overseas and in the States and stuff like that. He was talking to a couple of G League teams that actually wanted me a lot, um, but I wasn't, they like their season starts kind of late. So I wouldn't have got any information or feedback till like October or so. Um, so he was just like, this is a good place where you can go and play and they'll give you the keys and and the fan base is crazy. And, and I was like, all right, cool, I'll take it. Like. That's, that's kind of what I wanted to do this year was just get some playing time. I wanted to play. Like I said earlier, like the past couple of years, I haven't really had a lot of playing time or a lot of uh, tr like uh, trust or like 
the confidence to go out there and hoop. Um, and that's kind of what this coach does. He gives me he gives me the confidence. He gives me the keys, and he just lets me go. So I imagine you don't regret it. <laughs> no, not at, all. Get it. not at all. Uh, it is also a listener submitted question. Did you have any other Hungarian suitors before Saged? So the way the way my agent, my mentor and stuff works, he just tells me like, oh, like this is a good place for you to go. Like he doesn't tell me like, oh, you can go here, here, or here. He's like, this is you would think this is the best spot for you to go. So that's kind of how it went. What is your opinion about the atmosphere in the arena? Yeah, so it's crazy. Um, it's kind of a small gym. You wouldn't think it if it gets that loud, but it gets really rowdy in there. Um, and I love it. I love the the especially when the co close games come. Then the, the crowd gets hyped, and that kind of gets me going. So I love it. You haven't been to so many other arenas so far, mm -hmm. but which one did you like the most? I mean, they're all pretty exciting, um, especially the games are really close. Um, I think last game, la our last away game, that was a crazy, that was a crazy atmosphere. And how big were the arenas of the North Texas University and Gonzaga? Gonzaga is pretty big, isn't it? Um, North Texas is way bigger than Gonzaga, but Gonzaga is packed out. They're sold out every game. Like you have to buy your tickets in advance, all that stuff. Um, the, the school, the student section, like the fans is crazy. The fans are crazy at Gonzaga. Yeah. And they are crazy here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How far can the team go this season? What do you think? I think the sky is the limit. Um, like I said before, if we just stick to what we know, um, don't get ahead of ourselves and just kind of stay tunnel vision. Then we'll be okay. There is a very interesting question sent by a former player. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the biggest weakness of Falco? Right. Um, I think they're a great team. Um, I don't think they really have too many weaknesses. As they, they're really good. Their coach is really good. The players are really good. Um, they, they know like to focus in on certain players. They know how to, to all that good stuff. Um, I don't think they have too many weaknesses. I think they just like they just had a bad game. Um, we played with a lot of energy. Um, as long as they come with energy, then they're they're they're, they're beating us. Like if they they come with 100% energy, then they're obviously beating us because their players are good, their coach is good. So I don't think they have too many weaknesses. I told that you have a short rotation. Falco mm -hmm. has a pretty wide rotation, especially mm -hmm. on the guard position. A player like you who plays nearly 40 minutes every game. What is better if you play nearly all the game or when you have more players on the same position? Because we we think together with Donny and with so much other guys that maybe it is not so good to have so many players for one or two positions. Right. Um, I think I think it's tough to say which one is better. Um, I think it all just depends on like if you know your role. So like on this team, I know I'm gonna play 40. So I have it in my mindset, like, okay, I'm going to go and, like, I have to, I got to maintain, I got to maintain the whole game. Um, I think if it's like a, you're going to play 20 minutes, spot minutes here or there, then I, that's my mentality. Like, when I get in the game, I'm going to do what I can in those couple minutes, and then then I'm going to get pulled out. Whereas playing 40 minutes, it's like, I'm not going to get subbed out. So it's like, just go out there, give it your all, like, play through mistakes, all this stuff. Um, so I think it's kind of tough to decide, like, which one's better. Um, I think it just depends on the team and what the coach needs. Last question. Mm -hmm. As the title of this podcast is Triple Double Podcast, mm -hmm. I have to congratulate you because you recorded the first Triple Double of this season. Have you had a Triple Double during your career anytime? Yes, um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but I actually had a Triple Double in college at University of North Texas. And I think it was like my junior year, my, my third year in college. Um, I had like a 12-10-10 game or something like that. Um, so that was my first time. And this is, I want to say it's my second time. Um, that's actually being recorded. Yeah. Ryan, thank you. I had a very great time. Yes. Keep yeah, up this good it. good game because I can say, I think in the name of a lot of other uh, basketball lovers, that it's a pleasure to see you every week because we can rarely see such a good player and such an interesting player in the Hungarian League. So keep up and thank mm -hmm. you for coming. Thank you so much for having me.